Hey, this is Pastor Bradley. Glad you came to join us on the day. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be ministering in this lesson called Help. How many of you have been in a position in your life where you have needed help? Help with anything. Help with raising the kids, help with your finances, help with a new job, help with you just getting something done that you are having a hard time completing. Well, I am a firm believer that all the help you need is in the Word of God. And what we're going to do in this series is find out how to actually locate that help and get that help to work for you. So stay tuned as we hear more about help. So let's go back and kind of lay out, lay some foundation. Number one, one of the first things we said, our premise was this. If 2018 is going to be better than 2017, uh, it's going to get better because I get some help getting better. Amen? Everybody, everybody in here could use some help. We need help with everything. Help with my mind, help with my thinking, help with my finances, help with my family, help with my walk. There's not an area in my life that I don't need help in. Matter of fact, there won't be a day in my life that I won't need help in one of these areas. Does that make, does that make sense? I don't graduate from help. I just learn how to use help all the time. Amen? All right, so now the goal of the lesson is this. Number one is to identify where our help comes from and then learn how to access that help or tap into it. Now, the text was already clear about where your help comes from. Your help comes from the Lord, amen? The problem is a lot of times we look from help, look for help everywhere but from the Word of God. We're going to look to our friends, we look to your mama, look to your father, look to your neighbor, look to whatever network you have, and those things are good if they help you, but they should not necessarily be the first place you go. The first place I go should be to the Lord. Oh, I can't get no amens, but how many of y'all know people will, let you, people will let you down? Listen, there's no obligation that they have to help you the way you think they should. See, the biggest disappointment is that you create these expectations from people, then they don't meet them, but they never agree to your expectation in the first place. <laughs> That's why your focus should not be on folks. Your focus should always be where? On God. Amen. So now we've, we've, we've got that down. So the next thing after that we had to identify is this. I want to make sure not only did we need to identify where our help comes from, we also needed to talk about uh, what help was and then what it looks like. All right, let, let's deal with this for a second. Let me give you a couple of definitions because I want to make sure you have this. We define help as this, especially for this series. Help as power or ability to assist in accomplishing a goal or task, power or ability to assist in accomplishing a goal or task. Now, that's the definition I believe Holy Spirit gave me. Uh, when I looked it up, I found out it lines up very much with Webster's Dictionary. Webster says this, help is defined as to make easier for someone to do something by offering services or resources. To make easier for someone to do something by offering services or resources. Now, here's what it didn't say. This is what it didn't say. It didn't say a help was having somebody do it for you. And most of the time, especially in church, when we talk about help, our mindset is send somebody to do it for me. And so what you realize is that help does not. Now here's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to say you can't get help that way. All I'm going to say is don't make that your only definition of help. Okay. Uh, you've got to expand what help looks like. Okay. Listen, I don't have to come and help you cut the grass, physically push a lawnmower to help you. If you got a one-stroke single-engine lawnmower and I bring you a zero-turn riding lawnmower, I helped you. If you don't have a way to get to work and I drop off some bus tickets at your house, I helped you. See, a lot of times help shows up as power or ability. It doesn't mean somebody's going to come and always do it for me. And so if we can kind of, if you don't mind me to push the envelope to kind of change some of the religious mindsets that we have, then, then, then I think we can get somewhere. Uh, let me give you this story because I, I like the story, this, this analogy that uh, I've heard and I've seen and I want to use it today because I think it applies. Because here's what I find out. If we don't agree on or at least expand our definition of what a help looks like, 
Help could be right in your face and you never see it. Matter of fact, that's most, that's most saints' problem. You got all the help you need, you just can't recognize it. All right, let, let, let me give you this. So there's a story goes, this story goes, this preacher told this story a long time ago. It says, so you got this guy climbing a mountain, and he decides he wants to scale this mountain, so he's scaling the mountain, and then finds himself getting stuck climbing the mountain. So he's hanging on by one hand, he's on a ledge, and he prays, Lord, I need some help. He's a believer. He, he, you know, he calls on the name of the Lord. God said, he will help me. Lord, I need your help. So a few minutes later, this huge bird flies to the, flies to the rock. Right where he is, lands on the cliff next to him, says, hey, look like you're having a problem over there. You need any help? And the, and, and the man says, no, I'm waiting on the Lord. Go away. Mountain lion shows up 30 minutes later. He said, listen, this is my mountain. I live at the top. Climb this thing all the time. I'm here every day. You look like you got a problem. You need some help? No, I'm waiting on the Lord. Go away. Mountain climber dude comes up. He got equipment, hooked up, got his pickaxe, and he climbing up the mountain. Hey, bro, you look like you're having a problem. You need some help? He said, nah, I'm waiting on the Lord. So he fell. <laughs> and he died. <laughs> he get to heaven, and the first thing he did when he got to the gate, he wanted to holler at Jesus. Lord, I prayed. I called on the name of the Lord. I, I asked for you to help me, and you let me, you let me fall. He said, why didn't you answer my prayer? He said, I did. I came three times. <laughs> I was a bird. <laughs> I was a mountain lion. <laughs> and I, see, but the problem is because you're looking for the spectacular. You didn't recognize help when it knocked on your door. And so what I really want to show you is, and we want to confirm, is that really anybody who has access to the Word of God has all the help you need for the rest of your life. Oh, I see, I didn't get a whole lot of amens. Okay, let me just lay this out. And, and we're not going to. Acts chapter 10, verse 38 says this. It says, it says, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. Right? All right, we identified this last Sunday. Jesus, according to John 1, is the Word of God made flesh. So we can say this, if Jesus, number one, we can say Jesus is still anointed. Okay, if Jesus and the Word are the same person, then the Word is anointed. So now, in, in case in human flesh was all the power that you needed when he walked on this earth as a man, Encased in the Word of God is all the power that you need. Oh, I can't. See, because we limit the power of being mobile in a human body. But he said he's the Word. So the same power that raised Lazarus from the dead is on your phone. <laughs> huh? The same power that healed the blind man is on your iPad. And see, because we're looking at it different, we decide that, no, that's not the same thing. But he said, listen, you can't separate me from my word. Me and my word, we're one. So whatever I had, my words got because that's the same person. So right now, you hold it in your hand, in your lap, looking at power of God. Now, let's, let, let's, let's go a little further. Just because you're around the power and holding it and looking at it, doesn't mean you know how to tap into it. Hmm? We, talk, we talked about this, and this is going to kind of close out a little bit of a review. The lady with the issue of blood, you remember her? She, see, she went out in the press to touch Jesus. She touched him, and the Bible says virtue left Jesus, power left his body. Now, Jesus makes this statement, though, to his disciples. Listen, somebody touched me. They were a little bit miffed with Jesus going, all these people around you, how can you say somebody touch you, all these people touching you? He said, no, somebody drew some power out of me. Now, let's talk about this for a second. Because religion will have you thinking that God is picking and choosing who he distributes the power to. That's not what happened that day. 
Here is what he said. He said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Which means everybody touching him could have got something. But everybody that was touching him wasn't touching him in faith. Some people were touching him and they were just excited. Some people were touching him and they were just curious. Some people were just touching him just because of what they heard about him. That's curiosity is not enough to get the power out. Excitement is not enough to get the power out. The only thing God respects to get the power contacted is faith. So when the blind man comes to him, he encounters the blind man. You remember that? And he goes, do you believe I can do this for you? He wasn't asking like, do you believe I can do it? Like he wasn't sure. Like Jesus wasn't sure. What he needed was in order for this to transpire, I know what I can do. I just want to know, do you believe? Because what's going to make this power move is your faith. And so, so I want to kind of stop it right there because I want to use that kind of as our setup this morning to deal with this. Because if what contacts or moves or extracts or pulls out the power of God as our faith, I need, to be, I need to make sure I understand how to do that. Because this is what I found out. Even though we're in church, even though some of us are word people, everybody's version of faith is not necessarily the same version that I find in this Bible. And what I got to make sure is that if you're going to get the Bible kind of results, you got to have the Bible version of faith. Because, see, there are versions of faith, but they don't necessarily line up with God's version. Ooh, help me, Jesus. Uh, uh, I, I remember one time that my wife uh, had uh, skipped so many updates on her phone that she was so far behind in the updates, none of the apps and none of the phone, it just wouldn't work like it was supposed to. So she's hitting buttons. And things aren't working. Boy, we found out because her version was so old, it wouldn't run the programs on there. Oh, you better make sure your version ain't so old <laughs> that you hitting buttons and you thinking stuff's supposed to happen and then it's not happening and then you blaming it all on God and thinking that it's God and it's really your version. And so that's what I'm after today because here's what I don't want to see. This is, my, this is just the heart, my heart, because this is what I find out. People will try something, and then when it doesn't work, they'll quit on it saying, this don't work. See, that faith stuff don't work. See, that church thing didn't work. But see, here's what I found out. It, it, maybe we were misinformed. Maybe we were substituting things for faith that we thought would work. See, because sometimes we'll substitute shouting for faith. Shouting is good, but it don't mean you believe. Because you can shout and still be in doubt. Okay, love, I'm not getting no help now. Okay, or, or, or we substitute good works for faith. So we want to go overseas and build houses in Haiti. They want to go over here and do this, and they want to go over here and do that. And I'm not knocking all that. All that stuff is great. But a lot of people have the mindset that if I do enough of that, then when I need something, God's going to do something for me. And you can do that and still not believe. Or then we'll substitute church attendance. If I go to church enough, if I'm good enough, if I act right enough, and the bottom line is you can do all that and still not believe. So I, I want to make sure your version and the Bible version actually match. Is that all right today? Because after getting born again, the next probably most important thing you can probably get a hold of is how to live by faith. Because that's the one thing that'll change your finances. It'll change your family. It'll change your body. It'll change your situation. It'll change everything about you. I said it in the recap. You aren't designed to live past what you believe. Do you hear what I just said? 
You better get that. You, you can have as many people pray for you as you want. You can attend all the services that you want. You are not designed to live past where you believe. If you don't believe it's so, then you're stuck right where you're at. The day you change what you believe is the day you change how you live. Well, I'm not getting no help with this. See, the day you believe, see, the day you believe you can get better. The day you believe, you can stop cussing. The day you believe, you can be out of debt. The day you believe, the body can be healed. The day you believe, you can get a promotion. The day you believe, can't nobody hold you back. The day you believe, you can own your own business. It's the day things change for you. But as long as you believe the way you believe, you stuck with what you got. That's why he said, all things are possible to him that believes. You know what else that doesn't say? It's not possible to him that doesn't. I'm preaching good, boy. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying that. I'm preaching real good. It ain't possible to him that doesn't. So it's not designed to work for people who don't believe. So you should not be surprised if it don't work. It's not supposed to. Matter of fact, your faith is working. It's just working to keep you where you are. You don't believe it can get better, so it doesn't. Look down your road and say, it's really working. You just don't understand. Yeah. I don't believe people can do all that. That's why you can't do it. I don't believe people can be debt free. That's why you're not. I don't believe nobody can live right. That's why you don't. It's working. It's working. You got to realize you having what you're saying. <laughs> And then you go, I don't believe in that faith stuff. <laughs> oh, you're doing it right now. It's showing up all the time. I always get sick. <laughs> Nothing ever works out for me. And then it never works out. Why do you surprise when it blow up? Because it's not designed, life is not designed to operate beyond what you believe. So we got to do a couple things with this. I need to find out what you believe. I need to find out where you got it from. Where'd your belief system come from? Who said it? Who set that down? Who told you you couldn't get out? Then we need to fix it. And then we need to adjust it. Can we do that? We ain't gonna do it all today, but can we do that? <laughs> uh, we're just gonna take them one piece at a time. So let's talk about, let's just deal today, today, today only, let's just deal with Version, your version of our, the world's version of faith versus God's version of faith. And let's just make sure that our versions match God. And here's what we're going to say from here on out. When we find out what we find out that does not line up with God, listen, we're willing to throw it out. It's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like, especially my house, especially my wife in the house, anything that's past the due date. On oh, any food. See, I ain't grow up like that. Y'all clapping. I ain't grow up like that. Listen, if the milk was one day past, you were like, shoot, there ain't but one day. You can go two days. Pull a little bit in the cup, put your finger on uh, nah, Yeah, we good. Come on. See, y'all like me. Okay, 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 okay. See, it's more, it's more than in here. See, see in it, 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 the date, the date. I'm like, shoot, is it open? It ain't open. It's still good. <laughs> Five second rule, fall on the floor. Five. Okay, good. Yeah, see, y'all with me. Y'all with me. I don't know about what she doing. Stop telling our kids that. Listen, they fall on the floor, and it's the last Eminem, bro. Five seconds. You ain't been there but five seconds. Pick that Eminem up, look around. <laughs> Pop that. Okay, do what you want. Throw your Eminem in the trash. I ain't throwing mine in the trash. If that's the last one I got, no, it ain't. I'm going to eat that. I might not do that at your house, but I'll do it at mine. <laughs> Oh, y'all play too much. Come on. <laughs> All right, let's look at something. So go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. Let's take a little bit of time and, and dissect some things just to make sure our versions match and line up if we can do that. Hebrews 4, verse 2. When you find that, somebody say amen. All right. 
and I think we've cleared this hurdle. But I want to talk about this. I heard Holy Ghost say, you need to go here anyway. Okay, we'll do this. <clears throat> Y'all all right? Listen to this. For we also have had the gospel preached to us, NIV version, just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them because those who heard it did not combine it with faith. Now that becomes important, gospel. The gospel is the good news of the word of God. So you have an audience, a crowd, but the crowd has been divided. The crowd is divided into us and them. Us it worked for, them it didn't. But they were together when they heard the same word. But the deal is, us believe what they heard, them didn't. So really, let's talk about this. It's not necessarily the quality of the seed. It was the quality of the ground it was sown on. Can you get that? It wasn't what was heard. It was the condition of the people who heard it. Because here's what you, here's what you have. And I'm just going to throw out an example. In that crowd, they he could have mentioned or the word could have been preached that by his stripes you're healed. But when you heard that, you start coming up with all the reasons why it doesn't apply to you. Or you leave questioning instead of receiving. What do you think about that healing stuff? Everybody can't be healed. I know somebody that prayed they didn't get healed. Healing's for some people. I don't know about it. Okay, so, so now... You're not in faith for that word. Check this out. You can't have that. God didn't disqualify you. You did. Then I got us. Us said, I don't understand how everybody gets healed. I don't understand how, the word, how a word heals me. But here's what, I, here's what I do believe. If God said it, and he did it before, and he'll do it again. I believe my God will heal my body. I don't know how it works. I just believe it works. That's their word. They took that. <laughs> it was all put on the table. One group left it. One group snatched it. Oh, no man, nothing. But to love him. I don't believe everybody can be out of debt, so you're going to have to owe somebody something. You, everybody just don't pay off a house like that. You know, so you, you got to have bills from somewhere. I'm going to always have bills. Bills going to always be around. We're going to always have a car note. I'm going to always have a house note. We're going to always have a credit card. We're going to always have a bill. Okay. That word, not yours. I got another group over here that says, oh, no man, nothing but to love him. And go, does that mean I don't have to pay? No, I can have everything paid for. Out of debt, all my needs are met, with more left over. I ain't got to figure out how I can do that. But you know what, Lord? I believe. I believe you able. I believe you capable. I believe, I believe supernaturally you can wipe away my debt from a computer if you need to. I believe that. They took that. Us and them. In every service. Woo! In every service, there is us. I finding this out more and more. It's not always the preacher, because the preacher got to preach the word. Don't get me wrong. He ain't on the word, then we got a problem all together, all right? But the question is, the question is, what you do with what you heard? Now, the first question is, if you, who, ooh, that's whole, I ain't get this, I ain't get this early. This is good. If you question the validity or the integrity of the carrier of the word, 
Why in the world would you sit there and listen to him? Did you hear what I just said? I said if you question, because see, you are setting yourself up for failure if you're in a house where you don't believe the man or the woman of God. You're going to always be in the them category because you never believe anything dude said because his character, his conduct, his attitude doesn't line up with the word of God. So now you question everything. So you should never sit, your, oh, you should never sit yourself in an atmosphere. Well, you can't leave with an opportunity to grab the word. And you got people who will go sit in services. Don't believe anything that God said. Listen, I'm not saying what he said wasn't so. It's just because of some other issues. Conduct could be character, could be integrity, whatever it is. You really don't believe what he presents. You need to find you a pastor you can submit to. And I'll go here. If it ain't here, you need to find somewhere else. All right, let's get with y'all all right? Let's keep going. So now we see, we see how that works. The word must be mixed with your faith in order for you to grab it. Okay, good, good, good. We got that down. Let's, let's deal with this. So Hebrews 4.2, got a couple minutes left. Y'all all right? So anytime, not only do I hear the word, but I can go here. Anytime I read the word, there's an opportunity for me to grab it. I don't have to be in an atmosphere like this. I can be reading my Bible on my own to see something. He keeps them in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on him. You might be in turmoil. That might be the word I need. I can grab that if I believe that. I believe you can do that, Lord. So what'd you do then? Oh, I can talk about that later. We, you grab that and you fight off all the rest of the thoughts. Because anybody say the devil won't keep trying to work it. All right, so let's look at this. Hebrews 4, 2. Let me read this to you for a second time. I don't want to run all my time. It says, for, for we also... I said 4 2. Let me go back to 11. 11. Let me go to 11 1. Yeah. So let's talk about some mechanics real fast. I want to show you some things that I believe help me. I pray that it helps you. It says, Now faith is. I just want to stop right there. It says, Now faith is. Faith is, faith. If you're going to operate by faith, we talk about versions now because people's versions of faith. All right, let, let me do this. I, I, boy, Holy Ghost is pulling strong too. Um, you can hear people say things. They say they in faith and believe in God, but they talk in the future. One day God's going to do. One day I'm going to get out. One day God's going to heal my body. They talk, in, they, talk, they talk, it's down the road. Faith, it says now, faith is. Or you could easily say faith is now. Now let me show you what helped me to make adjustments in how I saw this and how I dealt with this. One of the things that helped me was understanding how this thing was all set up. So this is what I see. This is what I understand. God created time. He created time for man. But God does not live in time. God lives in eternity. Eternity, there is no beginning and there is no end. Eternity is one present now. There are no days in eternity. Eternity is one big right now. Okay, ooh, somebody. Okay. So God doesn't have a tomorrow. There is no next year for God. There is no later for God. Everything that God deals with, because he's in eternity, is... See, there's no sunrise and sunset in eternity. 
There is not 24 hours in eternity. There is no time. Time is irrelevant. I know it's hard for you to get your head around, but you got to get your mind around the thought. God doesn't, so he doesn't live in, man lives in time. He created time for man. Man lives in time. God lives outside of time. If you're going to do business with God, you got to do business where he is. Okay. He doesn't do business where you are. You do business by time. He does business by eternity. So now, if, I go, if I'm going to get something from God, anything I get from God, I got to get it when? If I'm going to get it later, then I'm not going to get it. <laughs> anything I get from God, I got to get it now because everything he has is already now. So by his stripes you were, were if you were yeah by your stripes you were past tense then which means you got to be healed. So if I'm gonna get healed, I'm gonna get healed. So when I pray, I ask God or I believe God. I don't believe God gonna heal me later because I'm dealing with God in eternity. I gotta believe God heal me. If I don't get it now, I won't see it later. Yo, somebody okay. If I don't get it now, then they won't see it later. Mark eleven twenty three. 23, believe you have received, E.D., received them, and then you shall have them. I got to get it in the now, because if I don't get it now, I won't see it later. So I go up to the now, I receive it now, I bring it back to time, and I still talk about as if I'm in eternity, and I talk about having it now, where is it? I already have it. I have it now. My bills paid now. My body healed. My marriage better. Now. Operating by faith. If you talk in future, you're not talking about now. Hey, we're back, and I pray that that lesson has been a blessing to you on today. If you'd like to get this lesson on uh, download, you can stay tuned and see some information that will help you learn how to lay hold of that. God bless you. See you soon. To hear this lesson again, you can listen to, download, or watch any message for free by visiting the Sermon Archive on our website, www.rvacity.org or by downloading the City Church mobile app on your iPhone, Android, or Windows device. Or you can watch the services live on our mobile app or our Facebook page.